Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about how to optimize web fun loading and rendering to improve the loading speed of your web application by using preloading strategy and fun display property. So let's get started now. I have a simple web page here which has one image which is right here and few paragraphs below the image and as well as I have one style set which is right here and inside this CSS file I have this custom font called Tangerine and it basically downloads the font from one of my local server so my main idea here is that any web application can request other cross-origin server to download the font for example you might request the Google server to download the Google funds. Let me show my local server quickly as well, but we didn't need to worry much about the local server setup. So as you can see that I have set up a static server on Express here. And if you look on the public folder, I have few static resources here. In our case, the font called Tangerine Regular is being downloaded by the user agent. Now, before implementing the solution to optimize the web fund loading and rendering, let's try to understand the problem. That way, when we implement the solution, we are very clear about it. Let me try to open this web page on a new tab. We just saw the flash of invisible text. We call it as FOIT, and it's a pretty popular term across the web. Let me do this one more time. I opened a new tab. We just saw that white screen for one or two seconds. And the reason for that is, let me share this document quickly right here, and then we will be clear about it. So here we have different browsers and their default behavior while downloading the custom fund. So in case of Chrome, which I'm using at the moment, it has a timeout of three seconds, meaning for the first three seconds, it will wait for the funds to get downloaded and rendered on the web page. And during that time, it simply displays the white screen. If the fund is downloaded within three seconds, white screen is replaced with the custom fund. If the fund takes longer to download, let's say four or five seconds, then in that scenario, Chrome will try to display the system fund. And when the actual custom fund is downloaded, the system fund will be swapped with the custom fund. I'll talk more about it later, but this these are the behavior of different browsers while downloading the custom funds. And I want to show you one more thing quickly here as well. If we look on the network tab right here, let me refresh the page. We see that the first request is of course the HTML document and then we request for main CSS, which is right here. And then we have picture, and then don't worry about this installed hook and content because these are the JavaScripts that are being added by few extensions on my browser. Uh, but the last resource uh, of this page is this font, right? Which is being downloaded here. And the reason for this is the request to download this font is only triggered while your browser is parsing this CSS file, right? I want to illustrate this, this waterfall steps with the help of emails as well. So this is the diagram which represents the exact waterfall steps, right? Or we call it as critical rendering path. I'll be covering this topic later in the future, but let's try to uh, jump into this quickly. So. As I mentioned earlier, your user agent will request for the page, you get the HTML, and then based on that HTML, browser will construct the DOM, which is document object model. And then while parsing your HTML page, if it finds the link tag, then it will try to create the CSS object model. And when it parses the CSS, if it finds any request being made to font, it generates a new request which is exactly the same scenario in our case. And then your browser will wait, right? 
So in case of Chrome, it will wait for three seconds with that white screen until the fund is uh, successfully downloaded on your browser. So at that time, the uh, painting up text is delayed here, right? Which is depicted right here. So now, sorry, uh, to fix this problem, what we can do actually is we can initiate the download of this fund early in the process rather than we wait here and then make the request to download the font we can say to our browser hey start downloading this font because i need this font later in the process that way when browser builds this css object model then at this stage font is already being downloaded and then is ready to be painted on the screen so that's the whole idea here and we can achieve this thing with the help of preload. I just added one line of code here. If you look closely here, we are using link tag. And then for this rel attribute, we are using preload. So it's pretty similar to how we attach external CSS file. And on the ref, we just give the name of the resource that we want to preload. In our case, we want to preload the web font early in the process. And as is basically uh, so this preload helps to preload any resource. For example, we can instruct the browser to preload JavaScript file or any other CSS file. In our case, we are preloading fun, so this as attribute should be fun. And finally, we must have this cross-origin attribute as well. Even though you are hosting your fun in your same origin, uh, you are still required to add this uh, attribute as per the documentation of Google. That's pretty much it for the preload instruction here. Let me save this page. Now let me try to open this page on a new tab. Now we didn't see that flash of invisible text. Let me do this one more time quickly. So I think with this solution, we have improved the load speed of our application. So it's very crucial to have just a small change and then achieve very good performance on your web application. Let me also show some differences on the waterfall steps which we discussed earlier. So if I open the network tab right here, let me refresh the page. So if we compare the earlier steps, we can see this font on the second step right here. If you remember, the font was the last resource to be downloaded without preloading. But with the help of preloading strategy, browser has started to download the font very early in the process. So that's the whole idea about preloading strategy. Up until now, we talked about a scenario where the font will be downloaded within the period of three seconds. So now let's try to delay the time taken by the user agent to download the font. So I can do some simulation around it on our local server. And that's the whole idea of creating a local server and then hosting this font. So I'm going to add a few code quickly here. I just added a delay of four seconds here. Let me start the server quickly here. And now let's see the output on the browser. As we can see that white screen and then after that we saw the system font. Let me do this one more time quickly. There's the white screen, system font, and then we actually saw the custom font. Let me show the network tab here as well. Open the page, timeout period, default font is still being downloaded. It gets downloaded and then the actual custom font is rendered. We call this problem as FOUT. In other words, we call it as flash of unstyled text. And the reason why we are saying unstyled text is your system font might be different from your actual custom font. And there are a few solutions to solve this problem and people have different opinions about different uh, solutions. So on the CSS file, I'm going to add a new property called font display. It is being supported by all the major browsers. In case if you 
are still operating under some old browser, I guess there is a separate library which handles the same scenario. So for the timing, I'm just going to focus on the font display property. So there are a few options here and each of these options have different use cases. So this auto value is basically a value which is defined by the by your uh, user agent. In case of Safari, it might be different. In case of Chrome, it might be different and so on, right? So in case of Chrome, auto means block because block is the default behavior, meaning it will wait for that three seconds with white screen. And then if it's not being downloaded, it shows the system fund. And when the actual custom fund get downloaded, the system fund is being swapped, right? And there is um, another option called swap. And with the swap, what your browser does is it doesn't have any block period, meaning it will display the system font right away. Let me show that quickly as well. We didn't see that white space here. Your browser directly shows the system font like so. And then when the custom font is downloaded, it just swaps with the new custom fund. And uh, people has different opinion about the swap because if you notice here, the custom fund only occupies three lines on the first paragraph, right? But if we look on the system fund, it took, I guess, five lines here. And with this differences on the layout and positions, it will trigger the layout shifts, right? Or we call it that as reflow right imagine you have some button right here right and this is uh, sorry we have three lines here and on the system fund your button will be pushed downwards right and it might not be a good user experience let me share one more document quickly here to talk more about these options so as we saw earlier about block and swap options these two options has problems of layout shifts. In case of block, there is a problem of flash of invisible text, whereas in case of swap, there is a problem of flash of unstyled text. So uh, there are two more options which are fallback and optional. So the main idea of fallback and optional options are to uh, minimize the risks of layout shift and invisible text. And the way it does is by providing extremely short window for block period and also the swap period is pretty small. So if the font is not downloaded and rendered within this time period, then browser will only display the system fund, even though it later downloads the font. And it's the same thing with optional with just one difference and that's there is no swap period window for the optional option. So meaning if the browser is able to download and render the custom font within this block period, then it displays, else it will never display the custom font even in the future browser successfully downloads the font. So let's try to implement these remaining options now. So let me try to make it fall back and with everything remaining the same let me try to open a new tab here so we saw the default font and meanwhile the font is um, being downloaded which we can see here let me try to refresh so the font is still getting downloaded we already saw the system font now the font has been downloaded but it didn't swap with the custom font right because um, fallback option prioritizes to minimize the reflows so it's the same thing with the optional as well right which is even uh, stricter than the fallback option let me open this tab one more time it shows the default fund on the network tab uh, let me do this one more time system fund is here still downloading 
even if the fund is downloaded successfully, it will never swap the system fund with the custom fund. It's because the main goal of the uh, optional option is to prevent the layout shifts or reflow in order to provide good user experience. That's pretty much it about the fund display and please make sure to pick the correct option based on your situation. If you think that font style is very important, then I guess you have to go with either block or swap. And if layout shifts is important to you, then I guess you have to pick between fallback or optional. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you like my video, please share and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me to grow my channel. Until then, see you on the next video. Bye-bye.